the metal plate of 4 mm thickness K is equal to 95.5 watts per meter degree Celsius is exposed to vapor at 100 degree Celsius on one side and cooling water at 25 degree Celsius on the opposite side. First stop, the heat transfer coefficient on the vapor side and water side are 14,500 watts per meter square degree Celsius and uh, 2,250 watts per meter square degree Celsius respectively. Determine the rate of heat transfer. The second thing, the overall heat transfer coefficient and the third thing, temperature drop at each side of the heat transfer. Okay, so uh, you know, uh, uh, in, in all my videos, uh, I have been doing this. So I'm continuing uh, that particular, uh, I'm just continuing that particular topic once again in this video. So basically we are again into composite wall, but very soon in this video itself, we will be uh, going for the uh, heat transfer through composite cylinder. Okay, so here what you can see, uh, you can see in this diagram that there are two composite walls, uh, means there are two uh, uh, material uh, that when conjointed uh, is becoming a uh, one composite wall. Okay, so here it is, it's vapor. Okay, so what's there is the metallic plate of 4 mm thickness, the metallic plate of 4 mm thickness here, metallic plate of 4 mm thickness is exposed to vapor at 100 degrees Celsius. So this is basically vapor, so it's basically open and it's the, uh, it's basically the ambient to this wall okay uh, the uh, the other side of the ambient to this wall okay and the other side is water okay so one side is vapor and the next side is water okay and the cooling water at 25 degrees Celsius on the opposite side the heat transfer coefficients on the vapor side okay the heat transfer coefficient see uh, when you are looking at this particular unit you should be aware whatever whatever be the uh, title of this uh, na uh, means whatever be the name like uh, it could be like heat transfer coefficient, or it could be like convective heat transfer coefficient or it could be like anything. But if you see this particular unit means watts per meter square degree Celsius or watts per meter square Kelvin, then basically he is talking about H. Okay, so H is basically you know that is the heat transfer coefficient from Newton's law of convection or the Newton's law of cooling for the matter. Okay, so this is vapor and this is water and this is metallic plate. So it is getting sandwiched between the vapor side and the water side and you know uh, how to make the thermal resistance, right? So to make the thermal resistance circuit, the analogous circuit of the thermal uh, of the uh, resistance in thermal circuit, you need to know that this is the HF that is the vapor side resistance. So it will be R thermal convection of vapor side. Then it will be of the material side means the metal plate and then the heat will encounter once again the thermal the convection thermal resistance of the water side. So the heat will first of all encounter the thermal resistance of vapor then it will enter into the metallic plate it will encounter the thermal resistance due to metallic plate and once it comes out it will actually encounter the thermal resistance or the convective resistance of water. So that is how it's being made 100 degrees Celsius heat is getting transferred here okay to 25 degrees Celsius. So this is how you actually make uh, similar to what you do in the electrical circuits okay. This is the solution there okay the thickness of the metallic plate the thickness of the metallic plate is given here. So it is uh, like L is equals to 4 mm. So you need to convert it into meters. Okay, the thermal conductivity of plate material. Thermal conductivity of plate material is also given here. The temperature of vapor, hot fluid. The temperature of vapor is also given here. Okay, so it is 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, the temperature of water, cold fluid. The temperature of cold fluid is also given here. So you have almost everything, the heat transfer coefficients of the vapor side when the heat first of all encounters the first thing that comes in is the vapor side and the vapor side has the heat transfer coefficient of this value it's a good value because it's hot uh, okay and water side and when the uh, when the heat comes out of the metallic uh, when the heat encounters the uh, mm, you know uh, uh, when the heat comes out of the metallic body it actually encounters uh, encounters the thermal uh, convective uh, resistance of the water and the value of the thermal convective resistance of the water is 2250 watts per meter uh, meter square degree Celsius. Okay, the rate of heat transfer per meter square and you all know that this is, you all know from my previous videos that this is uh, of the format of delta T by RTH. I have already told you several times that, that it can be written like this. So R 
TH for conduction is L by K A, okay, and R T H by convection is one by H A, okay. So here we will be using almost everything because we have a convection on two sides and we have conduction on one metallic plate, okay. So here it is. So you can see it is convection, convection, and there is the conduction, okay. So put all the values here. It is hundred. It is twenty-five. So it is one by h. So a has been because you have to calculate per meter square. So that's why the a has been taken out. So it is like only one by h, and it is only l by k. Okay. So you can see one by h vapor, one by h cooling water, and it is l by k. Okay. So just put all the values here. It is seventy-five, and this is the one by h. This is the one by h for the cooling water, and this is l by k. So just a simple mathematics, and you can calculate the rate of heat transfer is this much. Q is equals to 1.35 into 10 to the power 5 watts per meter square. So it is very much simple. Okay, so it's very simple to understand that how you know uh, when you have a convection, when you have convection along with the conduction. So how you first of all convert it into an, an electrical resistance circuit. Look at it. How you convert it into an electrical resistance circuit, and then because it will be in series, and something if and and something if it is in parallel. I have already uh, shown that kind of numerical. I have solved that kind of numerical in my theory lectures, in my theory videos. You just go and check it out. Okay. Uh, then uh, there there was uh, you know two elements were in parallel. So you just uh, you know go for like. Uh, okay, I will uh, uh, I, I will uh, solve it later on. Okay. So there there were you know two things that they were in parallel. And uh, and then you go for the equivalent resistance, and equivalent resistance will be like one by R plus uh, summation of one by R. You all know, okay. Now the next thing, the overall heat transfer coefficient U, the rate of heat transfer through a composite system is given by. We all know that Q is equals to U A delta T, okay. So delta T will be T hot minus T cold, or it could be T S minus T infinity, whatever uh, be the condition asked in the numerical, okay. So uh, now the overall heat transfer coefficient. So the overall heat transfer coefficient from um, uh, from you know uh, what I taught you in the video lectures in my theory lectures basically. So I already told you that U is equals to one by summation of all the resistance. It's the reciprocal of summation of all the resistances. So here you will find out. So it is like the overall heat transfer coefficient. Overall heat transfer coefficient will be uh, Q is equals to U A delta T as I've already told you here. So it will be like this. So you already have Q. You have Q by A rather, okay? From the from the previous thing, you have Q by A watts per meter square. Okay, just put it here. You have delta T. So just solve U. It's a simple mathematics and it's simple numerical. Now temperature drop on at east side of the heat transfer. Temperature drop at east side. Now what do you understand by temperature drop at east side? Let's let's see this. We know that Q is equals to Q H if is equals to Q of one to two. Okay, and Q C F is equals to 1.35. So what he's talking about actually, I already uh, mentioned it several times in my lectures that it's a steady state. Here also I have mentioned. See the Q that is entering here, it's a steady state. It won't change. So actually, it will come in and it will go out with the same magnitude. You just have to take the intermediate heat, uh, uh, the parameters, so that you can adjust to get the same amount of heat. Okay, I have told you in the uh, in my previous lectures several times. So here also we are doing the same thing. Here also, see Q is equals to Q H F Q one to two. That's the metallic plate and Q cooling fluid. So it remains same. Okay, so just you need to uh, take it out. Temperature drop at east side. So on east side there will be uh, you can adjust it like T one minus T two by thermal resistance. That will be equal to like T three minus T four. I'm taking just an example. Thermal resistance. It could be conduction. It could be conduction and T4 minus T5 by thermal resistance. It could be convection. So everything will remain same. Okay. This is all Q. So the Q will remain same. The only thing is that you need to either calculate RTS separately and can find out the temperatures and whatever is asked. You can you can actually uh, do it like this. So here also we have done the same thing. See Q12 is the is just the simple mathematics that they have done. Okay, is delta T H F. Okay, and then the temperature drop in the metal they have calculated as 5.65 degrees Celsius. Okay, and then the uh, thing for cooling fluid. 
Now, since they have done it uh, for heating fluid, so heating fluid heat has been taken up. Okay, the temperatures regarding the heating fluid has been taken up. And if you want to do for the cooling fluid, so the cooling fluid temperature is being taken up. And we all know that QHF, Q12, and QCF they are all same. So only they are playing with the temperatures and the resistances. Okay. Only they are playing with the temperatures and the resistances. Rest everything is same because again I am saying the heat is steady in nature. So heat that is coming into the system will go out of the system with the same magnitude. You just need to play. You just need to play a game uh, with temperatures and the resistances. That is it. See, the same thing has been done. So temperature drop in the water film has also been calculated with the same principle. 